Hello, and welcome to a video presentation on dimensional analysis. Here's what you'll learn. How to use dimensional analysis to make unit conversions. First of all, what is dimensional analysis? Dimensional analysis is the process of changing or converting from one set of units to another without changing the value of the original number. To change from one set of units to another, we're going to multiply the original number by a fraction called a unit conversion factor. And that brings up a whole new question. What are unit conversion factors? The word unit means one. So when we multiply a number by a unit conversion factor to change its units, we're just multiplying by the number one. Hence, this multiplication will not change the value of our original number. Unit conversion factors are rates whose value in the numerator and denominator are equal. For example, you know there are 24 hours in one day. We could set that up as a rate by writing 24 hours over one day. Of course, we could also write this as one day over 24 hours. Both of these are equal. And when we multiply these two rates together, everything will cancel to one. 24 hours in the numerator cancels 24 hours in the denominator, and one day in the numerator cancels one day in the denominator. Everything becomes one. Here are some more examples of unit conversion factors. Three feet over one yard. That means three feet equals one yard. One gallon over four quarts. That means one gallon is the same as four quarts. 2,000 pounds over one ton means 2,000 pounds equals a ton. Unit conversion factors are just equal quantities that are set up in fraction form. The numerator and denominator on unit conversion factors can be reversed or switched if necessary when we convert units. For example, one minute over 60 seconds. That could also be written as 60 seconds over one minute. 16 ounces is the same as one pound. Could also be written as one pound is the same as 16 ounces. We can use as many unit conversion factors as necessary to get to our final answer. Some problems will only require one unit conversion factor. Others may require two or more. The number of unit conversion factors we have to use is not important. The only important thing is that our answer end up in the required units. Let's convert two and a half tons to an equal number of pounds. And I'm going to start by writing down the number we'll convert, two and a half tons. Now if the number we are converting isn't already written as a fraction, let's set it up as a fraction to start. Two and a half tons can be turned into a fraction by putting it over one. Now we do this because we're going to be canceling units. And it's important to know if our units are in the numerator or denominator of our fractions. Units, just like numbers, can only cancel if we have the same units in opposite parts of the fractions. Now, since we want to convert from tons to pounds, do we know a relationship between these two units? In fact, we do. One ton is 2,000 pounds, and we can write it like this. One ton over 2,000 pounds. However, we could also say 2,000 pounds is one ton, and write it like this, 2,000 pounds over one ton. So how do we know which of these unit conversion factors we're going to use in this problem? Since we want to cancel the unit tons located in the numerator of our original fraction, we have to use the unit conversion factor with tons in the denominator. So they'll end up canceling when we multiply. So let's multiply our original number by the second unit conversion. Now we can see that the unit's tons cancel in the numerator and the denominator. And the only units we have left are pounds, and that's the one we want. So with our units in order, we can finish the problem by working with the numbers. Multiplying the numerators, 
two and a half times two thousand gives us five thousand and pounds are in the numerator as well. In the denominator we just have one times one which is one. So two and a half tons is the same as five thousand pounds. Now let's convert six days to an equal number of hours. Again, start by turning the original number into a fraction. We have six days, so I'll put it over one. What's the relationship between days and hours? Well, there are 24 hours in a day. So let's go ahead and multiply by 24 hours over one day. Now, did we use the right conversion factor here, 24 hours over one day? Or should we have used the inverse, one day over 24 hours? Once we write in the units for our conversion factor, it's easy to see if you've used the right one. If the units you want to cancel appear in the numerator of one fraction and in the denominator of the other, your problem is set up correctly. In this case, we've set it up correctly. The units days will cancel in the numerator and denominator. We're now left with our desired units of hours. With the units taken care of, we finish up by working with the numbers. In the numerator, 6 times 24 is 144, and the units up there are hours. And in the denominator, 1 times 1 is 1. So, 6 days is equivalent to 144 hours. Now let's convert 45 miles per hour into feet per second. Again, start by turning the original number into a fraction. Now it may not look like it, but our problem is already a fraction. The word per means divide. So our fraction sets up as 45 miles over one hour. In this problem, we have two conversions to accomplish. We need to change miles to feet and hours to seconds so that we end up with feet per second. When I have multiple conversions to perform, as we do here, I like to write that off to the side to remind me of the units I'm looking for in the numerator and denominator. So let's go ahead and write feet per second off to the side. Now, it doesn't matter which one we convert first, so I'm going to start with miles to feet. One mile is 5,280 feet, so let's multiply by one mile over 5,280 feet. Now, did we use the right conversion here, or should we use the inverse, 5,280 feet over one mile? Well, since miles are on the top in both fractions, we used the wrong conversion. So let's turn it upside down so miles will cancel when we multiply. So I'll put 5,280 feet over one mile. Now the unit's miles do cancel in the numerator and denominator. And we have feet in the numerator, which is exactly what we want. Next, let's convert hours to seconds. Now if you're not sure how many seconds are in an hour, and a lot of people aren't, we can use two conversion factors to get there. First, convert from hours to minutes, because we know that one hour is 60 minutes. Now, we set up the conversion properly because hours cancel. The hours in the denominator will cancel with hours in the numerator. Next, we have to convert the minutes to seconds. We know that in one minute there are 60 seconds, so let's multiply by one minute over 60 seconds. Again, we know we set up the conversion properly because minutes will cancel, the numerators and denominators. We're now left with the units feet in the numerator and seconds in the denominator, exactly what we're trying to achieve. Since we have the units all taken care of, we now work with the numbers. In the numerator, 45 times 5,280 times 1 times 1 gives us 237,600. And the units in the numerator are feet. In the denominator, 1 times 1 times 60 times 60 
gives us 3,600. And the units in the denominator are seconds. Finally, we're going to divide 237,600 by 3,600 to get our answer of 66 feet per second. Now a satellite is orbiting Earth at an altitude of 625 kilometers. What is the satellite's altitude in miles? And they gave us a note on the side here. They tell us that one kilometer equals 0 0.62 miles. That's going to be useful. We start by turning the original number into a fraction. We have 625 kilometers, so I'll put that in the numerator and put a 1 underneath it. We need to convert from kilometers to miles. Do we have a conversion factor for that? Well, most people don't have this conversion memorized, and thank goodness it's provided to us in the problem. One kilometer equals 0 0.62 miles. So we can multiply the original number by the conversion factor. Let's multiply by 0 0.62 miles over one kilometer. Now we know we set up the conversion factor properly because kilometers will cancel in the numerator and the denominator. That leaves our units as miles, which is what we're looking for. So now that the units are in order, let's work with the numbers. In the numerator, 625 times 0 0.62 gives us 387.5. And include units in the numerator, which were miles. In the denominator, 1 times 1 gives us 1. And there are no units in the denominator. So we have our answer of 387 and a half miles. The satellite is orbiting Earth at 387 and a half miles. Now making unit conversions within the metric system can be accomplished using conversion factors too. However, there's a method that I want to show you that can make some metric conversions much easier. In the metric system, conversions are simple because you only have to move a decimal point around. We can use the following scale to determine how far to move our decimal point and in which direction to move it. And here's the scale. It's K, H, D, B, D, C, M. Each letter represents one of the common prefixes in the metric system. There are other prefix letters in the metric system, but for our needs, we're just going to focus on these. K means kilo, as in kilometer. H means hecto, as in hectoliter. D means deca, as in decagram. B stands for the basic metric units, just liters, just meters, or just gram. B is not a prefix. D means deci, as in decimeter. C means centi, as in centiliter. And M means milli, as in milligram. Now, many students remember these letters by associating words with each letter to make a sentence or a saying. And one of the more popular mnemonics is, King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk. Now, you can use this one or make up one of your own. Let's convert two deciliters into milliliters using our scale. Here's our scale again. First, write down the number in the problem that we're going to convert with its decimal point. We have two deciliters, so I'll write down two with a decimal. Now, identify where we start on this scale. Since our original number is in deciliters, we're going to begin at deca. The scale will show us how to move our decimal, so let's put a decimal point above deca, just like that. Now, how many times and in what direction do we move the decimal on our scale to get to milla for milliliters? One, two, three, four. We move the decimal on the scale four places to the right. So we have to move the decimal in our number four places to the right as well. One, two, three, four. And we've created some gaps, so we have to fill the empty spaces with zeros now. Put in four zeros. And we have our answer, 
two liters is the same as 20,000 milliliters. Now let's convert 10.76 meters into kilometers. Again, let's write down our scale. K for kilo, H for hecto, D for deca, B for the basic units of just liters, just meters, or just grams, D for deci, C for centi, and M for milli. Next, write down just the number in the problem with its decimal point. So that's 10.76. Now identify where we place the decimal on our scale to start. Since our original number is in meters, we begin at the basic units, right in the middle of our scale. Now note, if the problem was written as 10.76 M, instead of writing out meters as we did here, don't confuse a single M for starting at milli on our scale. If we were to start at milli, the number would be written as 10.6 mm with two m's. A single m means meters and we would start at the basic units. Now, how many times and in what direction do we move the decimal on our scale to get to kilo for kilometers? One, two, three times. We move the decimal on the scale three places to the left. So we have to move the decimal in our number three places to the left. One, two, three. And of course we're going to fill the empty space with a zero. And don't forget to add one in front of the decimal as well. And our answer is 0 0.01076 kilometers. Now here's a final thought on dimensional analysis. Make sure you pay attention to the abbreviations for your units. Some abbreviations can be confusing. Here are a few common ones to watch out for. If you see an M, that's meters, not miles or minutes. If you see MI, that's miles, not minutes. MIN means minutes. If you see an S or SEC or SECS, that's seconds. LBS is short for pounds. OZ means ounces. Congratulations! You've learned how to use dimensional analysis to make unit conversions.